Vicente Tito, Costello Sato III, born 24 August 1948, is a Filipino politician and the 29th and current Senate President of the Philippines. Sato served as Vice Mayor of Quezon City, the Philippines' most populous city, from 1988 to 1992. Following the 2016 elections, he is currently serving his fourth term in the Senate, having served two consecutive terms from 1992 to 2004, he was re-elected to the Senate in 2010. Aside from politics, Sato also participated in acting and hosting. Sato is a co-host of Eat Bulaga, the longest-running variety show in Philippine television history. He is the brother of celebrities Vic Sato, Val Sato, and Maru Sato. He is also a grandson and grandnephew of former Senators Vicente Y. Sato and Filman Sato. Early life and education Vicente Costello Sato III was born on 24 August 1948. His parents were Marcelino Antonio Ojeda Sato and Dr. Herminia Costello Sato. His siblings are Valmar, born 1945, Marvic Valentin, born 1954, and Marcelino Antonio Jr. Sato's paternal grandfather and namesake was former Senator Vicente Sato, 1877-1950. Vicente's brother, Filman, 1872-1966, also served as a senator and was one of those who drafted the 1935 Constitution. Sato studied at Colegio de San Juan de Latran in Intramuros, Manila for his elementary, high school, and college education, earning a Bachelor of Arts degree majoring in English. Entertainment career Sato had a career as a songwriter, actor, and as a music artist as a member of the Manila Sound Group, VST and Company. Among his notable compositions is Magkesa, which is recognized as one of the anthems of the 1986 People Power Revolution. Pepsi Paloma gang rape case On May 29, 2018, Sato made a request to the online news site Inquirer.net to have the March 2014 articles by United States-based columnist Rodel Rodas removed, the rape of Pepsi Paloma, and, was Pepsi Paloma murdered, which stated that he used his political connections to influence the outcome of the Pepsi Paloma rape case. After 34 years, in March 2016, Sato denied involvement in the Pepsi Palom rape case stating that it was a gimmick of Paloma's talent manager, Ray De La Cruz. In response, the National Union of Journalists of the Philippines, NUJP, asked, does he believe his status and authority as Senate President give him better chances of having the stories taken down? On July 4, 2018, Inquirer.net took down the articles that Sato had requested to be removed from their website. The NUJP condemned the takedown and issued a statement calling it one of the darkest days in the annals of Philippine journalism. As an unintended example of the Streisand effect, Sato's takedown request of the Inquirer.net articles renewed public interest in the Paloma gang rape case. In 1982, the 15 year old actress Pepsi Paloma accused Sato's brother Vic Sato and comedians Joey De Leon and Richie De Horsi of gang raping and taking photos of her on June 21 in a room at the Sulo Hotel in Quezon. City. On July 31, Dela Cruz lodged a formal complaint with Defense Minister Juan Ponce and Real. On August 18, Paloma filed charges of rape and acts of lasciviousness against the three television personalities before the Quezon City Fiscal's office. The crime of rape at the time carried the death penalty in the Philippines, and to prevent his brother and cohorts from being sent to the electric chair, Sato quickly went to see Paloma while she was still securing the services of Adi. Rene Cayetano. According to Paloma, Sato coerced her into signing an affidavit of desistance to drop the rape charges against his brother and cohorts. Sato had allegedly placed a pistol on the table in front of Paloma when he went to talk to her. In exchange for the dismissal of the charges of rape, Vic Sato, De Leon, and De Horsi issued a public apology towards Paloma, stating, we hope that you will not allow the error we have committed against you to stand as a stumbling block to that future which we all look forward to. We therefore ask you to find it in your heart to pardon us for the wrong which we have done against you. Three years later, Paloma was found dead in an apparent suicide. Dela Cruz was murdered years later. Political career Quezon City Sato was vice mayor of Quezon City from 1988 to 1992. He founded the Vice Mayor's League of the Philippines and served as its first president. During this period, Sato was also named vice chairman of Citizens. 
Drug Watch. First two terms in Senate, 1992–2004. Sato was elected to the Senate of the Philippines in the 1992 senatorial election, topping the tally with nearly 12 million votes, more than 3 million more than his second-place ranker. This made him the third member of his family to enter the Senate, after his grandfather Vicente Yap Sato and granduncle Filman Sato. He served as assistant majority floor leader, was a member of the Commission on Appointments, and served as chairman on several Senate committees. In the 1998 senatorial election, Sato earned another term in the Senate with a third-place finish, the best result among senators vying for re-election, from April 30 to May 1, 2001, together with Juan Ponce and Real, Gregorio Hanazan, Panfilo Laxon and Miriam Defensor Santiago, he led the EDSA-3 protests in support of Joseph Estrada. On May 1, 2001, the protesters stormed Malacanang Palace. In spite of this, he ran for another term in the Senate in 2007 under the Team Unity Coalition backed by the Arroyo administration, but was unsuccessful, finishing in 19th place. Arroyo Cabinet Sato was appointed by President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo as a member of the Board of Directors and Acting Chairman of the Dangerous Drugs Board on 4 July, 2008, succeeding Anselmo Avenido whose term was expiring that day. The appointment was just over one year after his failed 2007 senatorial bid. Philippine election laws forbid defeated candidates from being appointed to government posts within a year of the election. Third term in Senate, 2010-2016 Sato won election to another term in the Philippine Senate in the 2010 senatorial election, as a member of the Nationalist People's Coalition. Upon the commencement of the 15th Congress on 26 July 2010, he was elected by the majority of his fellow senators as the majority leader of the Senate as well as the chairman of its Committee on Rules, thus he manages the legislative affairs of the Senate, particularly on the floor during the sessions. He was also one of the 20 senators that voted to convict Chief Justice Renato Corona and to remove him from office on 29 May of that year. In 2012, Sato was accused of plagiarizing several passages in a speech opposing the Reproductive Health Bill in the Philippine Senate. Several local and international news agencies and several internet users reported that Sato had taken the passages from a 2011 blog entry by Sarah Pope, an American home economist blogger. Sato asserted that he was quoting Natasha Campbell McBride, who was referenced in the blog post. Pope, upon learning of the controversy, confirmed Sato plagiarism on 16 August 2012 in another entry to her blog, strongly criticizing Sato for the plagiarism, for denying it, and for his stance on contraceptives. She also remarked that she did not intend to sue, Sato's chief of staff, in a comment on Pope's blog, admitted to using the blog post and failing to attribute Pope. S. Work. Pope responded to the comment again criticizing Sato's stance on the reproductive health bill. On 17 August, Sato reasserted his defense saying, I made a blanket disclosure. I mentioned beforehand my attributions, that I had many sources of information in my speech, so I have admitted that. I have made a disclosure, so what's their problem with that? They probably thought I'm trying to pass myself off as knowledgeable, on the subject, when in fact I'm not supposedly, where is the plagiarism there? They think that's plagiarism, so come on, sue me." Villacorta said he saw nothing wrong with using Pope's blog without attribution because it is public domain, and blogs are not covered by copyright. It is a new media and there is no jurisprudence yet. In an interview on the Philippine newscast 24 Horas, Sato remarked, Whatever it is, the buck stops with me, I'm the senator. Whatever I delivered in the Senate Hall is what's important. Whatever they say, we'll take it in stride. Sato also reiterated that his privilege speech under the protection of the Article 6 Section 11 of the Philippine Constitution, which states that no member of Congress shall be questioned nor be held liable in any other place for any speech or debate in the Congress or in any committee thereof. 
In an interview on the Philippine newscast The World Tonight, Pope remarked, He is acting as though he's above the law, that he is above copyright law, that he can do whatever he wants, he can step on whoever he wants, to get his agenda through the Philippine legislature. That's just wrong, that's very poor behavior. I hope the Filipino people take note of this behavior and subsequent denial on his bad behavior on the part of Senator Sato. Think about this when they go to the election booths when he's up for re-election. A South China Morning Post journalist, Risa Robles, also pointed out that Sato plagiarized five bloggers and a briefing paper which includes a blog titled The Truth of Contraceptives, a blog titled Feminists for Choice, a blog titled Talking Sense by Marlon Ramirez, a New York University blog publishing works by birth control activist Margaret Sanger, and a briefing paper published by the Catholic Family and Human Rights Institute. Robles also remarked that Sato would be championing digital piracy, she remarked. Addy. Villacorta said that the internet is free, sick, this would mean that Senator Sato would be championing digital piracy. On 9 November 2012, Carrie Kennedy, the daughter of late American Senator Robert F. Kennedy and president of the Robert F. Kennedy Center for Justice and Human Rights, wrote a public letter to Senator Sato accusing him of flagrantly and deceptively plagiarizing the Robert F. Kennedy. S. 1966 Day of Affirmation speech in his remarks to the Philippine Senate last 5 September 2012. Sato has since issued an apology to the Kennedy family, but tenaciously refused to admit that he committed plagiarism in his speech. Sato reasoned that the allegedly plagiarized passage was obtained from a text message sent by a Christian leader, which he then translated into Filipino as he found it fit for his speech without knowing that the words were Kennedy's. He also argued that he never claimed the ideas and words as his own, therefore he did not plagiarize. Sato was one of the two senators who have inserted provision on libel under the Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012 or anti-cybercrime law. However, he denied that he did so in retaliation for the cyberbullying he received from Filipino netizens who criticized his alleged plagiarisms. Instead, he claimed that he intended to penalize those who release celebrity sex tapes and to allow the corresponding victims to seek redress. In July 2013, at the end of the 15th Congress, Sato resigned as the majority leader following the resignation of Juan Ponce Enrile, his staunch political mentor, as Senate president. Enriel resigned due to allegations of misusing the Senate funds. Then Assistant Majority Leader Senator Gregorio Hanazan became the acting majority leader following Sato's resignation. On the commencement of the session of the 16th Congress, on the 22nd of July 2013, Sato became part of the new Senate Minority Group. He was chosen by his colleagues in the minority to be the deputy floor leader, second in command to Enriel, who became the minority leader. On July 2014, following Enrile's arrest on charges of plunder relating to the pork barrel scam, Sato became the acting minority floor leader. Enrile resumed his position as the minority floor leader after he was granted bail by the Supreme Court in August 2015. In 2013, Sato filed a bill that would mandate all government and non government employees to receive a 14th month of annual salary. Responding to the Department of Labor and Employment claims that the bill would worsen unemployment if implemented, Sato said that the existing 13th month pay is not truly a bonus because there are actually 13 months in a year. There are 52 weeks in a year divided by 4 weeks in a month. 13 months. Fourth term in Senate 2016 present. Senator Sato was re-elected in the 2016 elections. With 17.2 million votes, he finished in third place for the 12 contested Senate seats. On 25 July 2016, during the opening of the 17th Congress, Sato was again elected as majority leader. He was also elected as chairman of the Senate Committee on Rules and the Senate Committee on Ethics and Privileges. Being a member of the NPC, Sato is part of the supermajority. Coalition led by the PDP Laban, the political party of President Rodrigo Duterte and Senate President Aquilino Pimentel III, Sato has expressed his support for the revival of the death penalty, but only for high-level drug trafficking. 
On 3 May 2017, during the Commission on Appointments CA hearing on Judy Tagwawalo. S. Appointment as Secretary of Social Welfare and Development, Sato, a member of the CA, made controversial remarks which seemed to belittle Tagwawalo for being a single parent. An excerpt of his conversation with Tagwawalo during the televised hearing circulated online and drew criticisms from social media users. Sato, on the lighter side, Senator Drilone and I were looking at the personal information about you and you have two children, daughters Ba or sons. T-A-G-U-I-W-A-L-O, two daughters. Sato, two daughters, but you're single? T-A-G-U-I-W-A-L-O, my life has never been a normal one. I never had a whole father-mother-children kind of thing, except when I was growing up in Bacolod. Remember, I graduated from UP in 1970. I did organizing work. From 1972 up to the 1986, it has been life underground or in prison. So, well, my story would be different from the stories of those who have gone through up, a corporation, etc. Sato, ah, in street language, when you have children and you're single ang to wag dian. Na anyo lang. We call that. Just got knocked up. Soft laughter from the audience. Sato, thank you, you have my 100% support, Madam Secretary. T-A-G-U-I-W-A-L-O, Senator Sato, I teach women's studies, so we respect all kinds of families and that includes solo parents. Thank you. One of Tagwawalo's daughters demanded a public apology from Sato over his offensive remarks, asserting that, No woman deserves that kind of treatment. The Gabriella women. S. Party also demanded for a public apology, claiming that Sato went out of bounds, insulting solo parents and insinuating malice at Tagwawalo. The Commission on Human Rights condemned the event saying, it is deplorable that such a comment came from an elected senator and that it elicited laughter from the halls of the Congress. The incident shows how those charged by law to protect women from discrimination often forget and unwittingly become promoters of discrimination themselves. A statement from the Philippine Commission on Women called the incident, a mockery of a woman's circumstance as a solo parent as that status has nothing to do with her professional qualifications. Representatives Antonio Tinio, ACT Teachers Party List, and Ariel Casalau, Anakpaus, deprecated the behavior of their colleagues in Congress for tolerating Sato. S. Remarks. Filipino netizens also criticized Sato, who became a trending topic on Twitter that day. Some social media users even reminded him that his daughter, Sierra Sato, is also a single mother. Singer-actress Lee Salonga, who was single-handedly raised by her mother, decried Sato. S. Remarks. Celebrity single mothers Pakwang, L.J. Reyes, Geneva Cruz, and Claudine Barreto also denounced Sato. S. Remarks and expressed support for their fellow single mothers. In an interview after the hearing, Sato apologized and claimed that Tagwawalo was not offended by his remarks. He reasoned that perhaps people were just overly sensitive and did not understand the joke. He also added, I will be the last person in this country to disrespect a woman because my mother was one of the founders of the women's rights movement. I have two daughters who are separated, single, and have children so I don't think there should be big fuss about it. On 4 May, Secretary Judy Tagwawalo accepted Sato's apology, but clarified that the apology does not fully capture the extent of the gravity of what his joke implied, she also asserted that despite accepting Sato's apology, she will not tolerate misogyny, anti-women comments, and attacks towards solo parents. Tagwawalo also thanked Sato for supporting her confirmation as DSWD secretary. She, however, also thanked those who expressed their condemnation of Sato's statements, and those who supported her and all solo parents, despite Sato's apology, and Tagwawalo's acceptance thereof. Eight women's and workers' groups filed an ethics complaint against the senator on 10 May 2017. Among these groups were Coalition Against Trafficking in Women, Asia Pacific, and Partido ng Mangagawa. 
The said groups claimed that the aforementioned apology was insincere and that Sato normalized patriarchal views and trivialized the abandonment of responsibility over children. The complaint was filed with the Senate Committee on Ethics and Privileges, of which Sato is the chairman. Sato welcomed the complaint and declared his intention to go on leave from his committee as soon as he receives the complaint officially. On 9 May, the Federation of Solo Parents in Luzbiman, FSPL, approached Senator Sato in his office and requested his support for the passage of amendments to Republic Act No. 8972, or the Solo Parents Welfare Act of 2000. These amendments included discounts on medicine, hospitalization fees, clothing, tuition, milk, and vitamins for solo parents and their children. In a statement, Sato said that he is ready and willing to fight for the rights of single parents and assured the group that the amendments will be passed before December 2017. On the 7th of August 2017, Sato filed a resolution for the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee to investigate the alleged unexplained wealth of commission on elections chairman Andres Bautista. Personal life Sato is married to Helen Gamboa, a beauty queen, actress, and singer. They have four children, Romina, Diarella Maria, Giancarlo and Sierra, eight grandsons, Romino Vicente, Victorio, Vicente IV, Carlos Edriga, Alessandro Jose, Marciano, Juan Rosano, and Vincenzo Jose, and two granddaughters, Helena and Amaria Giuliana, actors Oyo Boy Sato and Miko Sato are his nephews. Actress Danica Sato is his niece. Radio television personality Ali Sato is the former wife his brother, Maru. Singer-actress Sharon Cunetta is also his niece, her mother, Elaine Gamboa, is a sister of Sato's wife, Helen Gamboa. In the 2016 elections, his son Giancarlo was elected councillor of Quezon City's 3rd district, while his daughter Diarella Maria was elected in the 6th district of the same city. His nephews Vico Sato and Victor Erico. Wahoo! Sato were elected councillors in Pasig and Parañaque respectively. He is an avid bowler and was a member of the Philippine national bowling team, representing the country several times at the AMF World Cup. Presently, he is the chairman of the Philippine Bowling Federation PBF. He also plays golf and has won several tournaments. He is Catholic. Filmography TV shows References External links Tito Sato website Eat Bulaga – website Official Senate biography of Vicente C. Sato 3